The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Where are you? That's such a cool door. Uh, oh, I um, this is my bed frame, but uh, yeah, I. <laughs> I'm yeah. so jealous. You do it in your bed. Oh, yeah, my- dude. I live in a library, so. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm joking. Like literally? I mean, I'm joking. <laughs> No. I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard in my life. No, no. I, <laughs> no, this is just my bed frame, but it has this cool look to it. So I just I was about to be use like, it as a background. Come. I'm based out of Miami right now. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah. I love Miami. Do you? Did you ever go? <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do the Back to the Future ride? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Well, not a lot of people have. That's what's yeah. crazy. No, it's great. I love it. I mean, it's crazy because um, they switched out Back to the Future for something else that I love, which is The Simpsons, but also I still like Back to the Future more. I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Because everything else about Springfield I adore, but that's the only thing. Yeah, and it's such a cute idea to have like the games there and all that stuff, but it's like the ride I feel like should have been... I don't know, maybe a roller coaster or something else. Right. But I think that Back to the Future, that ride was so perfect the way it was. But, you know, it just shows like the younger generation doesn't know what Back to the Future is. And not just that, like, I'm sure Simpsons will go away and become something else like in five years. Right. Exactly. It'll become freaking Paw Patrol or something, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, because they just put in Secret Lights Life secret life of pets and i'm they like sure what is that yeah and they're like, oh it's a kid movie i'm like oh, okay yeah kevin hart man kevin hart's a dog you got oh, really it. well i need i guess i need a kid to like to like <laughs> get with the kid movies i guess i gotta be but, honest i don't even i'm not even sure if kevin hart is a dog or if kevin hart's in it but i'm just guessing you're gonna <laughs> pretend that he is i'm yeah. all about that i'm yeah. all about that I'm what movie poster that. what movie poster doesn't have kevin hart in it like there's there's only a few to name you know <laughs> i mean i feel like and with cartoons who knows who's in it you know exactly. what i mean it's a gamble yeah no i i completely agree yeah that's uh that's that's awesome so <laughs> have you have you been to miami before a bunch i have so yeah. many times oh yeah i've For probably been or? to miami like 30 times in my oh, life yeah? Man, um, I guess grass is always fun. greener. I've, yeah. I just hate it. <laughs> Why? What do you hate about it? You know what it is? I feel like I'm not, I'm not, I think, I think I've realized this the older I've gotten is that I'm a California soul living in a Miami city. You know? Interesting. Because when I moved to I LA. I feel like I'm a Miami soul living in California. Right. Because when I moved to California for a little while, I was like, oh, I get this. Like, these are my people, you know. Right. But I don't know. I mean, there's good things and there's bad things about everything at the end of the day, you know. So, um, but yeah, have you lived in California your whole life? Yeah, I'm I'm from here. I'm from um, outside of San Francisco, a place called Los Altos near Stanford University. And then I moved to LA when I was like between nine to 11, we would go back and forth. So yeah, I mean, I don't know any different. Like I went to school here. I have all my friends here, you know, I've lived other places in between, but really like my home base, everyone's here. Where did you live in between, just out of curiosity? Because I've lived oh. in, in places in between as well. Oh, I was in um, I was in Vancouver for a couple years. Cool. Um, I I go back and forth from New York all the time, um, but never at a full place in New York like I did in Canada. Right. Um, but kind of like all over, you know, especially for work. Like I just yeah. go back and forth, which is awesome and lots of fun but um once you get to explore and see other places you're kind of like wait i want to go live over here for a longer period of time you know right um and i think that that's kind of right with covid like i think we've all 
been able to kind of change our atmosphere and I haven't. Um, <laughs> but that's why I'm like, oh, Miami sounds good. Well, yeah, because COVID doesn't exist here. So it's great. It doesn't exist there. Is it yeah. such a trip being there? Yeah. Everybody's like, I can't catch it. I'm Cuban. Why would I be able to catch it? Oh so God, how crazy. <laughs> Nobody thinks wow. like that. I don't think. I Do don't you think go so. to Disney World a lot? I, I go as much as I can. I know, I know you're a huge fan of it and we're definitely going to talk about it. Um, I know, let's, t- tell me all about Disney. That's what well, I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, I, we've, we've already started, which is great. Oh, like, I'm, I, I'm aware and I love it. I love yeah. how you get like right into it. I love, I love it, man. I haven't been in a while. I think the last time I went. Pre-COVID. Yeah, it was probably 2018. Yeah. Something like that. What's your favorite ride? Oh, yikes. That's tough. Okay. Right? So when I was a kid, I was a thrill seeker. Uh huh. But like, I don't know if you're like this, but the older I get, the more I'm just like, no, nah, the scenery is a lot nicer. I'd rather not feel no, more I want, horrible. I want thrills. I have not gotten that out of my system. Yeah. I'm thrilled all the time. I used to lie about my height and wear like stack sneakers, <laughs> like, <laughs> so dangerous. Um, do not recommend that. I am thrill seeker. So what is your favorite ride when you were a kid and the favorite now? Okay. So as a kid, it was Star Tours. Um, I and, puke almost every time on that. Okay. So fun story. Um, not really fun, but fun in retrospect um, is that my mom was a single mom for a long time and we went to Disney quite a bit. Uh, when I was growing up. What a good mom. She was, she was the best. I mean, she, I mean, it, it's something, sadly, I didn't realize it until I became older, you know, right, how right. much she, I think that's everyone, ass though, off. you know, she, yeah, yeah, she worked her ass off for me. Like, it's ridiculous. She's a freaking superhero. It's incredible, you know, and, um, and so she would take me to Disney and took me with like my aunt, my great aunt, my, and my, um, my grandparents and they would always get wheelchairs so we would always get like fast passes and stuff amazing i mean not right? amazing but like for a kid that must have of been course. like the coolest yeah i was like oh it's so awesome that grandpa's in a wheelchair now i can ride the ride. <laughs> <laughs> i don't have to wait in the 45 minute line for star tours so we would go to star tours and this is a thing i didn't know is that my mom has severe motion sickness right? No. And I didn't <gasps> know that. So my mom took me to Star Tours and I loved it. And I was too young to even know that something was wrong with her when she was like, I can't do this anymore. Like, you know, whatever. <gasps> and I'm like, well, let's go again. And she went again. And, and she went like, I mean, we ended up doing like shifts with other people in my family. I ended up riding the ride like eight times in a row. But oh, now, <laughs> my God, you're crazy. I would have yeah. been throwing up. Yeah, now looking in retrospect, it's it's wild what it did to my mother. <laughs> Your poor mom. <laughs> it's wild. Did she puke? Um, I, no, she's not a puker. She's one of those people that... It, but it that, must have just, like, wiped her out for the rest yeah, of the day. Yeah, it just wipes her out. Like, she'll faint before she pukes. Like, oh it's, God. like, severe. It's no, severe. I can't do Star Tours, and when I do it now, I mean, it's my favorite, too. I love it, but I have to take the glasses off because I can't, like, sure. I get such motion sickness with the 3D, I think, with the glasses. Yeah. Um, and what's your favorite right now? I mean, now it's, it's tough, man. I mean, I got to, I mean, I, I've always loved Rock and Roller Coaster as well. Cause that was Ooh. the first, that was the first roller coaster with a loop in it that I ever went on. Which oh, that's right. Cool. It has a loop. Yes. Yeah, the first thing you do. Yeah. It's oh, the very God, first thing. Right. Yeah. Do you go backwards on that or am I like thinking of something else? No, you're thinking of the mummy. Yeah, no, I know. I know the mummy, but I that. thought there was another one that you did upside down like that. Um, you do backwards. you do corkscrews in that one. You do, um, you do a loop at the very beginning. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of different stuff. It's fun. It's a fun one. You go through a, a glow in the dark donut. It's great. You know, it's great. 
Yeah. It's great. I love it. Yeah. Well, I like, think uh, that like you need to go back to Disney World. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Now that well, it's open again. You know what's funny is like I'm sure you'll agree with me. Um, I don't know if you'll agree with me as far as like when you were a kid, but when I was a kid, I didn't like Epcot because I was like, oh, that's the learning theme park. That's the boring yeah. theme park. Then I became an adult and I was like, I get it. <laughs> but why i still don't get it but i haven't been as an adult adult yet like i went i think the last time i was at walt disney world i was like 14 or something so i don't right. think that i still would get it but i don't drink so that right. would be like people are Neither like oh I. you go to epcot to drink so yeah. what is it that thrills you about it because so, the only thing i remember was the um which is now the frozen ride right. which i guess was the what was it like the, the matter way ride it was a matter mm -hmm. horn I think yeah no 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 it was like this weird ride that you went on inside and you were on a boat <laughs> right you're right it was and you a like Norway drop ride. one right. little thing and it was like really not that thrilling or great at all but it was the only you're ride right. I think that was there you're right. um and I remember being like oh this isn't as fun as Europe like that's what I remembered as a kid I was like this isn't Europe this is right. weird yeah. um but why do you like it? I mean, I love it just because I got it. I'm going to give you like the most basic white girl answer. Give I it like to it. Me. I like it because I, I like the food. You can have yeah. different food. You know, I, like I love being a buffet. Able, it's yeah, like a buffet. I love being able to go to Japan and get Japanese snacks, you know, that That's I can't cute. get anywhere else. I love being able to. I don't know. It, it was just, it's just fun. I'm not a drinker either, you know, so, right. um, nor do I want to be around plastered people, <laughs> you know, no, it's not necessarily it's not always, my favorite it's funny thing. funny for a second, but then it's not always funny. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It's funny when they're on their third or fourth country, by the time they're at the end, it's not funny anymore. Too far, too yeah. far. Yeah. Are there any rides now at Epcot? Yeah, there's a few new ones. I mean, there's there's one ride that I went on called Mission Space. Oh, and, I remember that. Um, or so is it it's new? not so it's not Spaceship Earth because that's oh, the I'm different Spaceship Earth. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that's like around the ball, and you know, it's it's yeah. super slow, and then you go backwards. You know, it's uh, this one is um, this one is one that where you are inside of a rocket ship and it is like the most realistic, like you are going to space ride. Right. And it's basically is it, a, is a it motion sickness? Oh yeah. In fact, I told my best friend the, who I went with, I said, if that ride lasted one second longer, I would have thrown up all of <gasps> everyone. I bet people throw up all the time on it. This There's whole someone, podcast is going to be us talking about puking. I'm not, I'm not lying. There is someone when it first, the ride first released in like 2004, something like that. No joke. Someone died on that ride. Why? <laughs> because I guess the, basically what you're on is to, to put it into perspective, you know, it's kind of unveiled the magic. You're on basically a Gravitron, right? Uh -huh, so right, it's, right. It's spinning you, but you're watching a video that's making you look forward the entire time, right? While you're mm. being spinned this way. So no. your, your brain doesn't know what to do. You know, it's <gasps> just bonkers. So like, unless you've like actually been in space, you're probably not going to be able to make it. <laughs> so what did they have like a, like a seizure or something? I don't know. I, oh my God, we have and that's to get to the, the funny, bottom of it. That's the funny thing about Disney death is that, you know, it they always like exist. push, they push the, the dead body outside the park and be like, no, nah, they died outside of the park. They didn't happen. They a, didn't they, happen. Yeah. They fainted in the park, but they died outside of it. You know, crazy, crazy. Yeah, it is nuts. But what about, what about you? What's your favorite? Oh my ride? God. Well, I, it's so exciting because I love Splash Mountain. That's sure. definitely probably my number one because it's a long ride. I love water rides. I love the small world effect. But what's even more exciting for me is one of my favorite 
movies, period, not even just Disney, is Princess and the Frog. So the fact that they're making this into a ride, they're turning Splash Mountain into Princess and the Frog, is kind of like all my dreams have come true. I'm so Um, glad you said that and not Song of the South. (laughs) Definitely not. Like, never seen it, only heard all the stuff. Like, can't even believe that existed. I know, Um, I know. But no, I mean... (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean, I think that Princess and the Frog is one of the most magical movies of all time. It's so the best good. soundtrack. So good. It's just beautiful. It's aesthetically like the best princess we've ever had. Um, so for and me, it's New Orleans, man. New Orleans is so dope. Uh, Nola, baby. Nola. Um, it's it's going to be like the best thing that they've ever done. Um, yeah. But it was exciting because my husband, I don't, Maybe he went on Splash Mountain one time years ago with me, but he hadn't been on in forever. And we recorded the whole thing. So he forgot like where all the drops were and that you go in the dark and there's a double drop and he didn't know. And I recorded the whole time and he's like screaming bloody murder. And it was so fun because we went for when COVID like lifted when they opened it. So it was just the two of us on the log ride. So, because that's how they have it now. And so it was really cool to kind of like experience it as the, you know, in quote unquote, last ride of Splash Mountain, you know? That's awesome. Um, Yeah. And And then I'm just a Space Mountain girl too. Those two are just my number ones. Yeah. I'm a Space Mountain girl too. I love Space Mountain. It's, um, (laughs) the best, best, right? And here's what I always say. You got to sit in the very front row and left your feet up. And put your arms out in front of you. Mm -hmm. And it is like the craziest sensation. Right. Yeah, it is insane. One one thing that's really cool that I don't know if they, I don't know if they're actually doing it, but it was a thought that I had once they announced the whole princess and the frog thing. Mm -hmm. Why don't they do, why don't they do a restaurant? Like a, like a. Country Bear Jamboree. Yeah. Like, why don't they do like a, like a restaurant? I bet they will. Yeah, I feel like that's because literally the whole theme of the movie is that she wants to make a restaurant. The Creole restaurant. Yeah. You know, they do have the French Market Cafe, so I'm sure that that's like already what they had the idea of. At least in Disneyland, it's like right next door. Right. Um, And they had the Country Bear Jamboree restaurant, so maybe they will change that and turn it into something. I'm sure they will. Once it starts, like, you know that it's just going to, like, blow up and become this huge thing because people are going to realize that it's the best. Um, Right. And it it will. I just think it'll take, it'll take time. Well, and like as if I work for a Disney, like as if I know what they're talking about, like (laughs) it's going to take some time. Well, and not only that, like another thing too, is that um, as far as at Disney World, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool French stuff that they're doing with Ratatouille. So they're doing. Oh my God. Wait, have you been on that ride yet? Not yet, no. Is it, it open or not yet? I, I, I'm not sure if it's open yet. Um, it but looks I know so cute. The, the restaurant has been open, though, which oh, I wow. haven't been. Yeah, the restaurant Remy is open, and they have an animaton, uh, animatronic uh, rat that's there. Um, obviously, he's not Stop. cooking or serving you food, but, you know, he's just Wouldn't there. that be so cute, though, if they figured out a way for him <laughs> I mean, to cook I don't food, know. like some some food you know, like oh you want some uh you know i don't know if now's Filet the mignon. perfect time i don't know if now's the perfect time for a rat to start cooking food for everybody but you know when is when <laughs> is yeah come on like when is it's very true it's very true <laughs> i love it man i so i want to go back to your childhood a little bit if that's okay uh yeah so Obviously, I know you started in the business super young at like nine years old, right? Yep. Yeah. But I, I, one of the questions I like asking on this podcast is like, what kind of kid would you say that you were? So who did you sit with at the lunch table? Like who were your friends at school? That kind of thing. Ooh, I love that. Um, I was a very loud child. I had a lot of energy. I had a gajillion friends. Um, I had different types of friends in the sense where I had my 
school friends who I was really close with. Yeah. Um, and I was very tight with them and we had our own little special bond. I had my friends that I did Taekwondo with and we had our own very special bond. And then I had my dance competition friends who I think I had the closest bond with and they are like family to me through and through. But it was funny because it's not that I had different personalities, but like I knew how to, um, like kind of adapt to each group so differently, you know, with my Taekwondo, it was mostly guys. And so that was my opportunity to kind of have that like little bro, tough, you know, tough bitch side to me, um, and kind of bro out with the, with the boys. And then with my school, like it was, it was fun and entertaining and engaging and, and more like your typical school, like second grade type behavior would be, you know, and would dance. That was my performance. Like we would stay up and watch SNL um, and my mom would let us stay up to midnight and watch it. And then we would perform not only our dance, but like recreate like a Chris Farley skit, you know? So like, that's where I got to be my outrageous wild. Um, I would moon everyone. It was my favorite thing to do. I love to like moon the world. I would do it in cars. Like it was so bad. Um, (laughs) But, um, but yeah, so that's what I would say is like kind of, um, that was like the vibe of it all. You know what I mean? Is like finding these different groups, um, and kind of just adapting. I was very much a chameleon like that. Right. I, I really relate to that so much as far as being a chameleon and being able to kind of fit into the mold of whoever it is yeah. that you're hanging out with. And I not in mean, a bad way. It's just like not. you see what someone is into, right? And you're like, oh, okay, I, I can relate to you on this level. Let's connect this way. Do you think that that's just a performer thing? Where like we kind of probably <laughs> we can sit behind a control booth and be like, all right, let's turn this down, turn this up, and like. All or right. is it is it like we're desperate for attention, so of we're going to do anything? Yes. Yeah. Are we performers? Yes. Mm-hmm. Are we also just humans that love other humans and know that other people can't quite adapt the way that we can? You know, yeah. uh, maybe that too. Mike, what's your birthday? Uh, it's December seventh. So are you a Sagittarius? I am. I'm such a Sag. I love Sagittarius. <laughs> I love that. But, you know, I don't know what any I of it means. <laughs> go with it. Yeah. My grandpa was a, Sci- a Scientologist, a Sagittarius, not a Scientologist. Yeah. Sagittarius. Much better. Close Much better close. than he's a Sagittarius. Very close. I don't know why that came out. I think I was watching the documentary. Um, yeah. but, but that's what I would say is like... It, it, yes, I think I agree with you. It's a performer thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it's also something, and I'm sure you can relate to this, is I always wanted people to feel comfortable. Oh, and yeah. So if I could do a little bit of my own work to make them feel comfortable and relax and be a little outgoing, then I would go forward and try to do that as much as possible. Maybe that's people pleasing and maybe that's narcissism, but you know, like you know, I can do it all, but you know, you really, you learn, you know, I'm also an only child. So I wonder if maybe that had something to do with it. Maybe. I mean, so I, I completely relate to that. I'm an introverted extrovert, if that makes any sense. Totally. So like, so like, I, I don't want to make a scene unless there's a stage and someone's asking me to make a scene, you know? Yeah. yeah, like I don't want to be like, "Hey guys, look at me!" And like people are just like, "We're just trying to drink it, something at Starbucks, man." Like we're not doing it. We're not like, you know. That's like me. Right. Unless I have a an audience to perform for, I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how I am. And like, and also sometimes because of my social anxiety, I let the performance mm-hmm. speak for itself. So that way I'm like, oh, like I'm confident, which this is also kind of narcissism. I'm confident in my performance enough to know that that'll speak for itself and people will come up and talk to me instead. <laughs> no, <laughs> me it, no, to I totally, <laughs> no, I totally, and you know, a lot of people always think, you know, uh, I have two ways that I am. Right. When I first meet people, I'm either really quiet and shy, at, sh- shy, shy, at, shy, shy, yeah. shy, shy, can't speak. I'm shy, it. Okay. <laughs> shy, it. Yeah. Um, that's good. You know what? Maybe I'm going to do that. I'm shy, it. I'm shy, um, it. No, but I'm very, um, not even reserved. If right. I don't know you and 
I may be trying to impress you because we have a mutual friend or like I'll use the example of like my husband's friends when I first met them. Mm -hmm. I was real nervous and I was just kind of like, hi, nice to meet you, you know, whatever. But if we were in any other situation and it was a group of strangers where there was like no need to like impress them or make my significant other feel good that like, oh, I get along with their friends. I would be like, hey, how are you? Like all the jokes. And that's just naturally who I am. But I feel like I shut down because I'm a very insecure person at heart and a very nervous person. And when I get that social anxiety, I like completely shut down. And that's why a lot of people say to me later on, you know, um, if it's like meeting through a friend or something, they'll be like, Oh my God, you're so much funnier than I thought you would be. And I'm like, yeah, because when you first met me, I was a nervous fucking rat. Right. Like, you know, but, but I need that moment. Either you have to be a complete stranger and I can be out there and it's like a performance. Or if I do sort of know you, I'm, I, I'm, a li- I'm very not little, I'm a lot awkward at first. Right. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's super, it's super difficult. I mean, you know, just, just putting it into perspective for the listener, like, you know, sometimes even doing this podcast is weird for me because it's essentially my job to make mm. us seem like we've known each other this whole time, you know? Totally. <laughs> like, Although it does feel like that, right? I mean, but here's the thing. We're both good at our jobs and we, we knew each other for two seconds and then we were like, you know what? I, I feel comfortable. We I like bonded. this person. Yep. That's it. Yep. It's a quick bond, you know? Yeah. Um, but some people, not so much, <laughs> you know? Some yeah. people, I, I mean, I'm sure it's happened to you as well, where like, you'll talk to some people and you're like, man, this is like pulling teeth. My God. I was like, just going to say that. Like, do you even want to be on a podcast? Why did you agree to do this? <laughs> like, <laughs> why, or why are you in the business if this right. is how you are? Like, I know. And then you're like, don't make me feel bad. You asked to be on my show. You know what I mean? And then you always are like, and then I get super defensive and I'm like, like, yeah. Anyways, whatever. No, it's true. I love this. (laughs) This is my favorite thing that's happened to me all week. I love this. (laughs) (laughs) We're having a good time. What was it when you first heard me talk? What was it? And you were like, I want her to be on the show. (laughs) I mean, she's going to be out of control. I mean, you, I, I mean, if we're going to be, if we're going to be honest, if you're actually asking me this question, yeah, I, um, I, I'm actually a really big fan of your podcast. Oh, yeah. I was like, which podcast? Who, whose podcast? Mine? Uh, yeah. Yours. The, the, emo- the emotional podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional yeah, support. Emotional. Yeah. Yay. Emotional. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I mean, and I told you this when I met you on Clubhouse. Yeah how much yeah. I appreciate that podcast and things like that. And of course, you know, I found, I, I found that podcast through being a fan of your work in, in the acting business, because I've seen you Aww. in Big Bang Theory and like the Disney Channel original movies and, you know, all that stuff, you know, but then I, we talked on, on Clubhouse for a little while. And then I was yeah. like, oh, this is actually a really great person. And not to mention, you might have this too. I think most performers have this where like, you kind of get a vibe about someone pretty quickly, even if you're not yep. talking to them, where you're yep. just like, man, I feel like I could be their friend real easy. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And that's kind of totally. how I felt about you. You know what I mean? Totally. And I think that you can kind of, and I think it's interesting, like talking about like voice apps, you know, you really can hear so much. You can hear the you know what oh, I mean? yeah, dude. And I think that, oh, you know, yeah. maybe a lot of people can't, but I, I know at least for me and maybe for you, like being in this business forever, you can just hear when someone is full of yeah. lying, you know, yeah. there's a lot of people on these voice apps where you're just like, you know, have fun now because when you go in front of a camera, you're not going to be able to do the things that you're doing and say the things that you're saying yeah. because you're lying to everyone, like right. more or less, you know? So yeah. I think it's really interesting that you do say that because you do, you, you can hear it. You know what yeah. I mean? You really can. You can hear the. It's f- one that. of the greatest things about that app is that, you know, it, it makes the people that are real succeed. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh huh. There's no way to, there's no way to buy your followers. You can't buy likes. You can't buy any of that. Like people have to like actually listen to you speak. And if you don't sound like you know what you're talking about, people are going to be like, see ya, you know? Yeah. Bye. We're not, we're not leaving you a review. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. You're not getting that review today. Man. And it makes me. I hope everyone gives Mike a great review on this one. (laughs) I hope so. We'll see. Just going into that, like, that that makes me so mad. Like, it mostly makes me mad for people that are, like, have only been in the entertainment business and, like, you know, and, and I know you don't know me very well, but I'm, I've been in the entertainment business for a while as well. I'm an mm. actor and I do stand up and all that stuff. I'm um, so jealous. I love stand up so much. Oh, thanks. I, I mean, I never said I was good, but I do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're good because you're funny. You're oh, a funny you. person naturally. Thank you very much. Is I it nerve wracking going on stage? Sometimes it is. I'll tell you what, it was really nerve wracking after having not done it for a year. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm getting, sure. And then getting and you're back doing on stage. In- wow. And it's yeah. in person, huh? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But I will, I, I have to tell you this. I just performed last night on a show. It was sold out. I mean, sold out as balls. It was so oh sold out. Oh my God. Yeah. And, I mean, standing room. It was crazy. And, oh my god and it was so liberating and fun oh it was awesome that. it was awesome i mean yeah like i, I mean so, so sometimes <laughs> i think for me for me personally and i'm sure i don't think it ever goes away sadly yeah. um but the hardest part of stand-up is the 30 seconds before you get up on stage Oh yeah, you probably want to puke. <laughs> yeah, because you're just like you're like having kind of a panic attack, and you're like, you I'm know, gonna fail. It's not yeah. gonna go well. No one's gonna laugh. Yep. Right, yep. and then you get that microphone, you hit your first punchline, and then you get comfortable. <gasps> I love it. I wouldn't keep doing it. I've been doing it for six years. I wouldn't still be doing it if I didn't love it. So, right. you know, and I started. You I started have to have in, a passion for things, and that's yeah. like you know for everything. Did you start when you were a kid? No, (laughs) no, I started, I started really, really late. I started at like 27, 28. Wow. I thought you were 24. No, no, I'm 33. Yeah. We're the same age. I totally thought you were like 24. Well, well, here's the thing. This is why we're both actors because we have those those Disney channel faces, you and I, you know, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you more I than say? I you more than I because you've I actually say? done it <laughs> that's not true don't I have give done up things on your, for Disney Channel as well don't give up on your kid dreams yeah. okay it's gonna happen no I've I've actually done stuff for Disney Channel as well stop it tell me everything <laughs> yeah I've done I've done a few things for Disney I've done a few things for uh for Nickelodeon yeah just small little things you know but But that's so fun it is fun you're right you're absolutely right it's super fun I mean the thing is there's only so much that you can do when you're living in Florida you know (laughs) and like Nickelodeon was based in Florida it was it was yeah yeah, like back in the 90s it was it was the in Orlando they filmed all that there they filmed right you know even down to like Tiana you know, that, that uh, Hispanic sitcom that they had for a while. Oh, I didn't remember that. You don't remember Tiana? No. It was one of their, it was one of their Team Nick shows. But yeah, I, I, I didn't start super young, sadly. Right. Like, you know, that's the, that's the difference between you and I. You started super young, which is so interesting for me because I want to know how that all happens. Like, do you, were at nine years old, were you just like, I want to do this? Yeah, I think just from dancing, like I had got asked to be on a uh, to audition for a kids club where I was a host. Um, right. And it was all just from people seeing me perform on stage as a competition dancer. 
And wow. when I realized like how much I love being on stage and how much I love performing and how I just wanted a reaction from the audience, like that's kind of just like how it happened. Right. Um, and I knew that I always wanted to be on TV, but I knew I always, I always wanted to be on SNL. Right. Um, and I didn't know that that meant being on TV. I just knew I wanted to be on comedy, like, on TV doing comedy like Chris Farley. He was my idol. He was my yeah. everything. And then I, and then Jim Carrey I was introduced to, and he was the next one. So it was like stuff like that that I think really got me um, excited. And it was something my parents were like, I, what do you mean you want to be an actor? Like, no, you know? <laughs> um, and it was what I wanted to do. And so my mom believed in me, and she was like, okay, if this is what you want to do, we're going to do it. But I don't get it, you know what I mean? And you're still yeah. going to get a school education. Um, so I think that that's just kind of how it happened. Right. That's incredible, man. I mean, the the thing that a lot of people need to realize when it comes to being a kid actor is, like, your parent has to be on your side in order for it to work. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, and, and like, I mean, my mom was not a stage mom. I knew a yeah. lot of those, and that was like crazy to me. Like, oh yeah, that. um, but she was not like that at all. And I think that you really have to have family that's backing you when you're at that age. But I think most importantly, I think that you have to really want to do it when you're young because yeah. it is so much rejection and it's so much hatred and it's so much anger um, yeah. that's put on you all the time um, that you have to not only have thick skin, but you have to just be okay with the rejection and like, no, it's nothing personal. It's yeah. just not for you. Of course. And <clears throat> look, I, I want to keep talking about this, but before we do, I have to do this one thing. Uh, we, we have a very specific bit that we like to do on this podcast Go for we need it. to make sure we get it done before we keep moving on. Here. Yes. So I need to ask you this. It's a, it's a pretty important question. Um, what is your favorite, what was your favorite snack growing up? Ooh, Doug Carew's. Yeah, that's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, what about yours? Probably the same. Yeah. I love Doug Carew's, but I had them recently and they are not, not the, the same, same formula. It's not the same. It's just not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> it's just not the same. No. It's just not the same. That's the Instagram clip right there. It's just us doing, it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's just not the same. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I mean, and back then, I don't know if you remember, but Dunkaroos had like a Baskin Robbins amount of flavors. You know, like they had like yeah. chocolate Dunkaroos and like, you know, vanilla sprinkles. They had Oreos. And, yeah, Oreos. They had a bunch of different stuff. No now, more. Now it's just like shortbread that's made from vanilla <sighs> folders. Yeah. And like, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not the dream like it was before. Right. And to be fair, it probably wasn't that great when we were kids. But <laughs> uh, You know, Mike, I disagree. I, yeah. I'm going to stand that it was amazing. Yeah. It's funny, man. I, it, there's, there really are some nostalgia eyes snacks sometimes but mm -hmm. i don't know i like for example today i just saw it on instagram today i was a huge fan i don't know if you remember this um mcdonald's used to sell cookies like those are my favorite things in the entire world the little ones yeah they were the best are, are they coming back no <laughs> They weren't. Oh. It was just like, it was just like, remember these? They were so good. Whatever happened to them? Don't and I'm you like, remember? What was the purple guy's name? Grimace. Grimace. Yeah. Grimace? Grimace. Yeah. Grimace. The, and, and those cookies, and they had Ronald McDonald, they had all of them, and they were those sugar cookies. They were like <laughs> animal crackers, and they were the best things in the entire world. They were so good. They were so good. I mean, where it's are kind they? of... It's kind of ridiculous. Like BTS gets their own meal, but I can't get the cookies back from McDonald's. Yeah, well, <laughs> I call. Yeah, I it's call ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a, a big thing we like to talk about on this podcast is cereal because it is the all-encompassing food of childhood. Um, yeah. So, what is? Did you? Are you a cereal fan? And what were your favorite cereals growing up? And oh. now all that. 
I'm a huge cereal fan. Great. I am um, allergic to milk and I shouldn't, I'm lactose intolerant, yet I eat ice cream and cheese, but I regret it later. Um, but sure. I never had milk and cereal. I'd always eat it plain. Mm-hmm. Um, Same. But I am a Lucky Charms girl. I'm a Fruit Loops girl. I'm a Frosted Flakes girl. I am a Smackers. Was it Smackers? Mm-hmm. Honey Smackers. Yeah. Honey smacks with the, the frog. With, with the frog, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. with the frog. Yeah. I love those. Yeah. And my, I would say one of my other favorites was frosted mini wheats, but I'd only yeah. eat the frosted part, and then I like toss out the other. Or kindred spirits. Kindred spirits. <laughs> you had no idea. Yeah, we just, I would just eat the frosting, put it back in the box. I crunch it, <laughs> and then I put it back, and then people would be like, ew, this is so gross. You didn't yeah. get the sugar one. I'd be like, I know, Mom. Why didn't you get the sugar one? Or even, <laughs> you got the ones with all the bites in them. <laughs> Not my fault. Yeah. Not my so, fault. Yeah, you should definitely call Kellogg's. There's something wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Something's wrong. I definitely did not do it. There is a mouse in here. Ratatouille <laughs> is here. Yeah. And so, like, uh, oh, my God. So, there's, um, what's the other cereal I that I would say, I'm do? also a fan of Cheerios. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't love Cheerios? Regular I Cheerios? Love. I do. I like Honey Nut, but I do love a regular Cheerio. If I'm on a plane or on the road, it's a guaranteed good time. It is, man. It is a guaranteed the classic. good time. And I don't like Special K, um, uh, the the Kellogg, you know, cornflakes. Mm-hmm. But in the UK and in Europe, they're different. Really? They are phenomenal. They're thick and they're crunchy and they're great. That's awesome. Like Frosted Flakes. That was the yeah. thing. They're great. Right. <laughs> but they changed the slogan in the UK to they're yeah. greater. They're <laughs> cool. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. I, that's awesome, man. So every episode of this podcast, I like to review a box of cereal with my guest. Um mm-hmm. And usually I like to get a cereal that has something to do with my guest in some way, shape, or form. So I spoke with my sponsors over at General Mills. Now, by sponsor, I mean that I like them and I buy all of their products. And by sponsor sponsor them. Right. And by spoke to, I mean that I tweeted them repeatedly and they never got back to me. So uh, the cereal that I chose for you, Alessandra, is... Star Wars The Mandalorian Cereal. Why did you choose that? (laughs) Okay, for the listener, she is extremely shocked. And then she was just, she she was then like, why did you choose that? (laughs) Did you know I'm obsessed with all things Baby Yoda? I think I have a talent for finding people's, I I have, I I can find people's, uh, like, soul cereal <laughs> that makes any sense okay. where it's just like know that this they is had the cereal, cereal that describes you <laughs> you know what i mean okay i didn't know they had a cereal are those yeah. marshmallows they sure are uh-huh. i know all these things for some reason um, i didn't even know that they had um a cereal this is like the craziest thing um i'm not sure if it's still in stores um i'm gonna find I, it yeah, but you can, I'm sure you can find it. I love that you had Baby Yoda. Have you given anyone else the child cereal? No, this is just you. This is all you. Special. This is all I you. Special. And, and if we were in person, I would give this to you. Because uh, that's, what, that's the thing that I always do for my in-person That's what friends episodes. are for. Yeah, I give them did the you, cereal. Did you used to do in-person interviews? I used to a while ago. Aww. And to be, to be completely honest... I kind of like that it went to Zoom because now I can have these great conversations with people like you, you know? Yeah, and like all over the world. I completely agree. I talk to people in South Africa and India. Like I would never be able to do that if it was just in a studio, like at an actual studio or like an actual in-person interview. Like you couldn't do that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, looking at this box here, um, you can see that there are like uh, corn puffs, kind of like a, like a Kix cereal. Uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. They're, they're fruit flavored, however. Um, and so um, there's So also, like tricks. Correct. Yeah. Just like tricks. And then there are Grogu shaped marshmallows all in it. 
Um, if you look at the back, it comes with a really oh cool my God. design right there. <gasps> so adorable. Who with doesn't Mando. love Grogu? I love Grogu. Yeah, he's the best. And um, and yeah, it's it's pretty basic um, as far as design. Uh, there's no there's no toys or anything in there. No sweepstakes, Aww. nothing like that. Um, uh, we can't review it because we're on a Zoom conference right now. Uh, but what we can do is we can give our listeners an ad to eat Star Wars The Mandalorian cereal. Ooh. However, I don't think that it would be fun if we did it as ourselves. I think it would be way more fun if uh, if you did it as the child or Grogu. Um, Mike had no idea that I have Grogu's everywhere. That's amazing. I have that right on my shelf right there. No. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready to talk. <laughs> That's not you, though. That's not fair. <laughs> ready? Okay. The child cereal. <laughs> it's so delicious with marshmallows shaped like Grogu <laughs> and fruit corn pops. <laughs> and it even comes with your own personal Mandalorian. <laughs> I love Thanks, it. Thanks, Grogu. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Star Wars the Mandalorian cereal, ladies and gentlemen. They said it couldn't oh be God. done. They were probably Dude, that's right. A that was oh a disaster. Oh my gosh. That sounded like you were holding a baby hostage while you were doing that review. I know. Everyone's going to be like, what the f is wrong? With <laughs> it was great. I loved it. That was so fun. Oh my gosh. Well, I want to go back to, to talking about acting and things like that because, you know, it's it's just nuts man i mean i you know not to be like every other podcast that you've been on but like dude you've done so many freaking cool things like you've you've done malcolm in the middle you were on a decom like i mean it's it's awesome dude like i and so like i mean and and actually you know what now i know what i want to talk about because we talked about this briefly and i want to know more about it what was your experience being on um was it beyond the mat? Going to the mat. Going to the mat. That's what it was. Yeah. The decom that you did with um, Andrew Lawrence. With Andrew Lawrence and uh, Wayne Brady, correct? Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady and, played. He was, yeah. a he was a blind coach, I believe. He was the blind um, uh, 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 music teacher. Music teacher. Um, okay. And he taught um, Andy how to play guitar. And um, I taught Andy how to uh, wrestle because my dad was the wrestling coach, D.B. Sweeney, I think it was. Oh, my God. I can't believe I remember that. Um, <laughs> you know, it was really fun. And I'm still friends with Andy to this day, which is pretty cool because we were like 15 and 14 when we did right. it. Um, so it's pretty crazy that like 20 years later, we're still friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like loads of fun and, you know, such an experience and so cool to say that, you know, in the 90s, 2000s, like that hot era of the DCOMs, like I can say that I was in one of them. Right. And it's really fun because I guess it's on Disney Plus now. And, sure you know, my cousins, my baby cousins don't know it's me and they were watching DCOMs. They're like, oh my God, it's Alessandra. And I'm like, yeah, that was me, you know? It was, so it's really cool. It's getting this, like, fun resurgence of, of um, younger generation that's watching. No, that's great, man. I mean, and I, I'm sure that must be such a trip is, like, you know, people talking to you about something that you barely remember because you were 10. Totally. Like <laughs> 15, 15, 15. But yes, I mean, well, yeah. for, for that specifically, but I'm just saying something like, you know, Malcolm in the middle oh, yeah. or oh, whatever I, I don't case. remember. Yeah. 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 Like no. how in the world are you going to remember what catering was like when you were 10? You know, like <laughs> no idea. I mean, there are certain things that I remember, but certain things, I don't even remember what the catering was like on a show a year ago. You sure. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm not remember, the best with memory. You only remember when it's the best or when it's the worst. Exactly. You know, exactly. like it's I remember, like I'll never forget when I did a pilot uh, 
on for for Fox, they their catering was so good. Like they Ooh. made us they made us custom breakfast burritos in the morning. They <gasps> for what was lunch, the pilot, Mike? Yeah, for a uh, 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 well, I I can talk about it. Who cares? It, it didn't get picked up. But um, the the pilot was for a show called Charity Case, um, and, um, and it starred Courtney Cox and Chris Parnell, and um, I was hired as an extra, and then got promoted to a speaking role, uh-huh. um, a, a, really a character because I spoke more than once, so I was yeah. I was a character. Uh, and had the show gone on, they probably would have made it an actual character at some point. Um, oh my god! Yeah, it was like a workplace comedy. It was a little bit darker. It was basically like it was basically a darker form of The Office. Uh-huh. So like, yeah, was which, this in L.A. or Miami? This was in L.A. Yeah, this cool. was when I lived in L.A. for a while. Um, not for a while. I was only there for less than a year i think maybe maybe wow. even just a and year, already but... working that's crazy well this is <laughs> that's the thing that i find nuts and like you know and maybe maybe to each their own but like you know and 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 look i don't i'm not saying this to 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 my own horn or anything like i'm just i'm literally just talking about this because it came up and that kind of thing but when i moved to la my roommates were like, you can't just email people your headshots and like your resume and stuff. And I'm like, why not? You know? And like, and they're like, there's etiquette to this and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, the worst thing they could say is no. And I already don't have it. Right. So what's right, the worst right. that could happen? Right. You know what I mean? I, I got my first manager in LA the first week I got there, wow. which which there's people I've heard. I didn't think this was normal. <laughs> I, I thought that was normal that you just like got an agent. You did, you started working, you did your thing. I didn't realize that there were people that had been there for two years and still hadn't got an agent yet. Yeah. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. So like, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it was my business sense. Maybe it was because I was good. I have no idea, but mm-hmm. I just knew I was there to work and that's why I'm there. And You're so, a hustler. yeah. And so uh, like, why do any, you know, why do anything else? And so in fact, that manager is the reason why I do stand up because wow. I never wanted to do stand. I mean, people, listeners of this podcast have heard this story many times, but I'm willing to share it with you. And if I have to cut it out, I'll cut it out. But, um, you know, when I had this manager, she was like, you need to start taking improv classes. And I looked at improv classes and you know, this, you, everybody goes to UCB and it's like 800 bucks for a one semester class. And people are just doing it because their agents and managers are telling them to do it. They don't even love improv, you know? And, um, and I just couldn't afford it. So I just, I just thought, well, stand up is free and I'm getting on stage, you know? And so I asked, I I said, is it, is stand up okay? And she goes, I don't care what you do. As long as you're Mm -hmm. on stage and you're keeping your performance blade sharp, I can care less what you're doing. As long as you're being funny or whatever, because when I send you for pilot season or whatever, I want you to be able to go into a room and crush. And so I was like, okay, cool. And then that's how I started doing stand up because I felt, you know, the way that I always tell people is like, I feel like comedy found me because, because I, at that point in my life, I, I, felt, like that. I, I felt like I had no choice. I was like, right. I have to do this. Like there's no other way around it. I have right. to do stand up, you know? So uh, and then I fell in love with it. Now I just do it because I love it, you know, as opposed to feeling like I do it because I have, you have to. to. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but, but yeah. And then she was like, are, are you in the Screen Actors Guild? And I was eligible, but I wasn't in it yet. And so I went and then I, I found out, you know, oh, well, if you're an extra, you know, on, on these, on shows, you can be in the screen in the screen actors guild and i go okay cool so that's yeah, great how I, sign me up yeah and that's how i did it that i like literally i i went on that show and i was just you know extras are glorified furniture you know this but right. like that's yeah. literally what it is but my my whole thing my philosophy has always been 
whether the camera is on you or not, you're always pre- you're always acting as if the mm-hmm. camera is on you. Absolutely. If, act- if action is called, whether you are whether you are in the frame and or or if anybody even cares about your character, mm-hmm. you're like it doesn't matter. Like it is now your show. Absolutely. You know, like like it's not your show, but like you know. No, but it's your performance. Yeah. Right, it's your performance. Like, like if you're at a restaurant and you're eating with with a date, like they call action. You're on a freaking date. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I love that. Like, I love a, that. <laughs> that's how I work. That's how I work. Like, you are on a date. You're asking date yeah. questions. You're eating. You're like you're you're saying weird stuff i mean making making the other actor feel uncomfortable where they're like are we yeah. even on are we even on screen right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's true you have to yeah. be on yeah yeah and st- and and i'm not saying that it'll work for everybody but i i have a feeling that that's the reason why people were like maybe we should use him like he seems right. kind of he's been making some weird faces i like this guy you know like, I like right. his weird faces that he's yeah. making. They're yeah. they're working for me. There's so much we can talk about, but you know, I I know I I know you you've been um you've talked you've talked at nauseum about like some bad times you've had on set. But how about this? Oh, this is a great question. What's like? What are like some audition horror stories that you've had? Oh my God. You know, it's so funny. People always ask me that question and I don't even know because the ones that are so traumatizing that have happened, I literally have to walk away from. And I I used to have like two to three auditions a day that at some point they all blur together. Cool. Like, I think if it was, if it was, if there was a horror story, like I know like one time I wasn't even crazy but like i didn't get a role because i reminded the head of the network of his ex-wife even though i was 17 years old like so like crazy like that happens in the business and you're like what like yeah what i'm 17 years old but it was just like my energy reminded me uh right reminded him of like a part of the personality of his ex that he didn't like you know so it's just like just crazy will happen like that all the time Man, I I had one recently, an in person one recently, um, that was really bad, and it ha- actually had nothing to do with the audition. It had everything. It was before the audition that everything wow. happened. So oh. I was walking to the casting uh, office, and I tripped on uneven concrete, and when I tripped, I landed mm-hmm. on my elbow. And I skid my elbow <gasps> and was bleeding profusely out of my elbow. Right. Oh. So I went into this warehouse. Uh, they they share because that's the thing about casting offices. I'm sure it's like this in LA. That it's like a warehouse that like shares like a carpet company and like you know a. a yeah. And like all these things, and then like next to the bathroom is like casting, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. it was one of those places. And so it was, I went to these carpet, uh, this carpet company, and I was like, hey guys, I'm so sorry to bother you. Like, can I, can I please just have a bandage? And they mm-hmm. had, they had bandages, and thankfully they, um, you know, they, they, took care of me. It was pretty awesome. Aww. It was pretty, it was really, really nice of them. They, they took care of it. I was extremely late to my audition and, and of course, okay. of course, no one in there knows what just happened. And my, my, my not, not only is my arm wrapped up, there's, there's like visible blood that you can see like coming no. out. Oh. And people are just like, and people are like, oh, like, why are you late? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, oh, this is, this has gone downhill before I even came in. Like, oh, <laughs> before worst. I even came in, you hated me. So yeah, like, the worst. Yeah. You're like, so like why what did I waste I, my time? Yeah. What, there's literally nothing I can do that's going to save this, you know, um, you know, thankfully, um, 
they they gave me a call back, I think because they found out what happened and they felt bad for me, but I never no. had a job, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's okay. You have the story now to talk about. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too, where I was just like, man, I better get a call back or else that fall was for nothing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Listen, all the falls are definitely not for nothing. There's always something there. And then you get a good story out of it. Yeah, you get a good story out of it. And that's always the, a good thing. So exactly. I want to I, I want to talk about this. When what is what was the inspiration for starting emotional support? Oh, great one. I love this. Um, well, you know, I, I am someone who lives with bipolar one disorder and I didn't have anyone to share that with. Um, and slowly but surely at conventions and just meeting different people, we had started talking about um, mental illness. And I had one particular woman that had shared with me um, her story. And she showed me scars on her arms and told me um, she harms herself. And that she never knew someone on TV had something very similar. Now, while I've never harmed myself like that, I have mentally harmed myself. Um, right. And um, I understand that feeling of frustration of needing some sort of release, needing some sort of breath, something to kind of just like, <sighs> like this. Um, and so I got to have this conversation with her and it was the most beautiful conversation. And I decided to share it on Instagram one day, not her story, but about living with bipolar disorder. And it kind of went from there. And then someone said to me, you know, why don't you have a podcast? And I said, I love to talk and I love to talk about mental health. And I want to bring awareness to this um, because no one is making it funny. And if someone is making it funny, then I'd love to be on their show and hear about it, you know, but um, every show that I hear on mental health, it's very wonderful and it's great and it's informative and I learn so much, but there's no taking light of it. So I think I just got kind of tired of it. Sure. Yeah. And that's the thing that I love about the, about emotional support is that you bring light into the darkness and that's my favorite thing about thank you thank yeah you. of course of course and i and i say that from from the deepest uh bowels of my heart <laughs> i don't know why i said it like that but <laughs> i love it i love it <laughs> from the bowels of my heart uh, my <laughs> My from the butt of my heart, I from just the butt of your heart. Yeah, you from the love butt. emotion, I'll support. Yeah, I love it so much. Yeah, and so no, but it's it's great because my favorite thing to do as a performer, whether it's you know whether it's comedy, whether it's music, whether it's acting, is always bringing light to darkness. That's our for one. It's a good thing because it reminds people that they're not alone. And also mm -hmm. it reminds people yeah. that like, it's okay to laugh at this stuff because if we don't, then it just makes things worse. Then what's worse. the point? Yeah, 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 exactly. It makes things worse. Like for example, I mean, you know, a lot of people with comedy and stuff will get offended on behalf of other people. And that's something that is like kind of annoying to me mm -hmm. because I will 100% care if it offends someone who actually went through something. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I make a joke about cancer, if you have cancer and you say, hey man, I have cancer, it wasn't really cool, then I'll be like, you know what? You're probably right, I'm sorry about that. I'll just change the joke. I, my intention was just to be funny. It wasn't to offend you. But if, but if you came up to me and you said, hey, I know someone who saw a TV show where someone had cancer one time, you know, mm -hmm. then I'm just like, really? Like, mm -hmm. who are you? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The metaphor that I like to use is like when, when you're hanging out, like when a bunch of guys are hanging out and they have one girl with them and like, or the other way around, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily always have to be a girl or whatever, but there's always that one person, like you're roasting each other. You're like, oh man, you're, you're fat. You're this, you're that, ha 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 ha. And then that one person's like, come on guys, he's not that fat. And then like makes it real. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> and then it's like, right. we were kidding. We're, we're not, right. we weren't trying to be real about this whole thing. Like, right. 
we're, right. we're just trying to make light out of this whole situation. That's all, you know? So and look, I'm just trying to make it light. Of course. Well, and not only that, you're making it light, but you're, it's, it's a different situation because you're talking about it from a first person point of view, because mm -hmm. you also have type, or you have bipolar one. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's a, it's not like you're a doctor who's allowed to make bipolar. fun of it. Yeah. Well, well, and that's the thing. Like you're, you're not a doctor who studied bipolar one. You have it. So it's a completely different. I'm someone with lived experience. So, right. you know, if I want to laugh at myself, then guess what? I can. Exactly. Yeah. I love it, man. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. Oh, you're so um, cute. I don't. I, because I, we've, believe it or not, we've been having so much fun together. We're at almost an hour and a half right now. Oh so, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't want to take up too much of your time. So I feel so bad about that, but. Well, we could do a having, part two. We'll do yeah. a part two. Well, it's, we, we can, this conversation can go on for however many parts you would like. I can talk to you forever, but, um, I, I do have to ask you these last two questions because okay. I find them to be very important for what we're trying to do with this podcast. You can answer them however you'd like. There's no right or wrong answer. You can answer them oh God, comedically, okay. vulnerably, however you'd like. So the first question is what advice would you give to your 10 year old self or your child version of yourself? Just know you're crazy for a reason. Mm -hmm. that's what i'd say yeah because was was that version of you scared to be crazy no i just didn't know what it meant and like why sure. i was feeling these ways you know yeah. but it's okay i'd right. say it was like okay yeah absolutely now how about this what do you think that that kid would think of who you are now Um, probably think I'm kind of cool, but like, why haven't I gotten my shit together a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is what you're doing at 34. Get it together, lady. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> they That's wouldn't be so that funny. impressed. They wouldn't be that impressed. Oh my <laughs> gosh. That's, it's so funny, but it's also so true. Um, Too true. Yeah, but I, I mean, and look, you're actually the perfect person to tell this to. This is the reason why I started asking these two questions, because uh, it all came about from auditioning and like yeah. being an actor and things like that. And just the frustration of going to all of these auditions and not getting a job, you yeah. know, sending all these self tapes and not getting a job you know, and like, they requested you. It's only you and like three other people that look exactly Lies. like you, you know, Lies. like all these different things that you get. Mm -hmm. And I would, would get mad because I would just be like, man, like, this is so dumb. I'm not even going to get it. Like, why do I even waste my time? And then miraculously, I, God or whoever, you know, mm -hmm. put this in my mind the 10 year old version of you would be so stoked that you're, I don't know. Maybe, maybe yours would. I don't think mine would. Yeah. Well, yours is already working. You know, like, <laughs> mine was like, like, Oh honey, get it together at this point. Yeah. No, but I know you're right. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's yeah. so true. And that's what you have to do. You have to always put things into perspective and of remember course. like you have come farther than you ever thought you, you really would. You know, right. you wake up in the morning, you've survived. That's a big accomplishment. Yeah, it, it definitely, look, man, it, it helps you remember how far you've come because this business doesn't really believe in the magic that inspired totally. you to get into it in the first place, which is so like yeah. weird that it doesn't, that it doesn't believe in that magic, yeah. you know, yeah. but the person that believed in it was the kid. That's mm -hmm. who believed in it. So that's why. I think the, the magic lies in what that kid thinks. So mm -hmm. whether it's, whether it's the kid version of yourself, or if you have kids of your own, then the magic that's in that kid's eyes, like what's going to make that kid happy? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I just, I just think that those things are, are super important. I and think like, they're great questions. 
Oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And like, and, and that's the thing that we like to talk about, you know, and, and that's the thing I like to remind all of my listeners and my guests as well, is that, you know, it, it's so important to never lose that sense of childlike wonder, you know, because mm-hmm. that is really what's going to get you, you know, so anywhere, sure. you know, so, true. so, yeah. So anyway, other than that, um, it was such a blast having you. It Holy was cow. so much fun. We'll do Holy this cow. again, okay? Please, anytime, anytime. I, when you I come mean, to can, LA, you give me a ring. Yeah, I can do. I I can do yours. You can come back on here. Yeah. Whatever you want. You are always welcome. I'm not joking. Oh, that's not like so an L. Much. That's not like an LA like David Letterman. Come back whenever you want, but only yeah, when right. you're promoting something. You know, like. <laughs> Well, like, I'm going to come when I'm promoting and when I'm not promoting. I'm just yeah. always going to come over and hang out. Yeah. I always wondered if, like, someone, if, like, Tom Hanks would just, like, show up on David Letterman and be like, hey, man, like, you said I could come back whenever I wanted. I don't really You're have like, anything I'm to here. promote. I'm just I'm here because you told me last week that I could come back if I wanted, you know? Well, thank um, you so much for having me on. This really course. was a treat. And I am definitely going to do this again. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Of course. Now, before you we have leave, so much though, more Disney to talk about. Yeah, so much more. Before you leave, though, can you please let the listeners know where they can find you online? Yes. Yes, you can find me at my name at Alessandra Torasani. If you Google, you'll find it. It's a hard name to spell. Um, and then listen to my podcast, Emotional Support. Um, and we have great, cool merch that goes towards great causes. Each month is a different um, you know, organization that we're raising money for. And um, check that out at emotionalsupportpodpod.com. And then, uh, and you also have the other podcast with Ryan as well, right? Yes. Yes. Almost live. Yeah. That's a fun one. That That's is a, a silly fun one. one. Absolutely. So definitely give those podcasts a subscription and listen to them. They're out every week. Um, and now for me, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike Valdez on Twitter at I am Mike Valdez. And you can go to who is Mike Valdez.com to find out the answer to that question. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. Have a great week. Don't lose your sense of childlike wonder. Bye besties. Bye.